Hey there boys and girls, my name is Kyle, better on the YouTubes as Blinkcraft, and today I'll be covering unwrapping. No, 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 just, just hold on a minute. For those of you who just want to blindly click around this video and trying to search for like a very specific part, just hold your horses for like, you know, one second. Instead of blindly clicking, let me just tell you how this video is going to go down. In total, it's going to be a three part video. This first section is going to be on unwrapping. I'm going to cover how to do all the primitive objects, and then we're going to move into some complicated ones. Part two, that's some super handy tips and tricks for unwrapping, such as stitching or maybe even the live unwrap tool. And then finally, there's part three, and that's where I'm just going to kind of ramble about hiding seams and fixing textures and some of the stuff that I've learned over working for the last few days with unwrapping stuff. All right, you eager beavers. Now that you know the plan, feel free to skip around or just wait to see everything I'm going to cover. All right, so let's get started. We'll start with our primitives. Here we have a cube, a cylinder, a sphere, and a pyramid. Now remember, unwrapping is as much of an art as it is creating, so it's all right if it's super scary and confusing at first. Basically, all you're doing when you're unwrapping is you're trying to convert a 3D object into a 2D space, and we do this by manually slicing different edges of our object. Now, how I like to unwrap cubes is just just to hit it with a little bit of a wham, bam, and a pow. And by that, what I mean is you just grab the edges you want and then press Ctrl E and click mark seams. Now to actually unwrap everything, you just select every face with L and then press U and select unwrap. Now the main goal for unwrapping a cube is trying to turn it into a cross. So this top face here, it's going to fold up. We want the two sides to fold out. The bottom will fold down. The back will fold down with the bottom and then it'll also fold out on its own. If we head over to the UV image editor, you can see that we created our cross. Now, sometimes your cube might be missing a face. Maybe it's part of another object, so there's no need to have this extra face. So how do we unwrap this? Well, since you're missing the face, it gives you enough seams to work with automatically that you don't have to add too many cuts. You could just leave it how it is and let it flatten out. However, it's going to be pretty ugly. The sides of your cube are definitely going to be stretched and it's going to be kind of hard to texture. So what I like to do is just slice the edges. Now when we unwrap it, you'll notice that you have a lot more space to work with on the sides when you're trying to apply textures. Now if you really need it to be seamless, we can fix that with welding, but we're going to come back to that. I wouldn't want to divulge the information here, rendering myself a liar to those who skipped ahead, now would I? So next up is the cylinder. This one's even easier. We'll just grab the top ring by holding Alt and then clicking on one of the edges. Then while holding Shift, we'll use Alt again to grab the bottom edge as well. Then we'll just mark those both as seams. Now for the body, all you have to do is add one vertical seam. Grab everything with L, use U to unwrap again, and as you can see, it's easy freaking peasy. Up next is our sphere. This one's a little strange. We'll start by grabbing two of the rings and then marking them as seams, and then we're gonna mark a vertical line as our final seam. Basically, we're just trying to convert our sphere into a cylinder. You might notice that this is our first UV unwrap that has a bit of a curve to it and I'll show you what to do with that later. And finally we have our pyramid, and this one's my favorite. When unwrapping it, I like to think about those chocolate desserts, you know, the, the ones where they have the sphere of chocolate and they pour hot melted chocolate onto it, and, and as it melts it gets to the point where the sphere splits apart and it reveals that super delicious ice cream inside. It's freaking amazing. It's like watching a motherfucking ice cream dragon split open as a tasty little dragon emerges triumphantly from within. Or, well, you know, it's at least something like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's fine. It just means you live a really sad life. Anyways, let's just slice the sides and unwrap it. Alright, so that's how you unwrap all the basic primitive objects. So now what you need to do is you need to start looking for the primitives within the complex ones. For this example, you can see I have two cylinders. All you have to do is the little loop-de-loop -loop and pull, and now your unwraps are looking cool. Alright, for those of you who made it here from part one, welcome to part two. For everyone who skipped ahead, you know, I, I don't blame you for jumping ahead. I just hate you. Forever. So here are some cool tips. Tip number one, when unwrapping you should use a UV grid or a color grid. In the UV image editor, to create one all you have to do is click new image and then for the type choose color grid or UV grid. I prefer the color one, but that's just my personal preference. You want to do this because then you can see if your UVs are bending or curving anywhere and you can try to straighten them up, which leads us into tip number two, straighten up your UVs. If we go back to the sphere, of course after I apply the grid as the texture, you'll see that our shit straight fucked and we need to fix it. In order to do this, we're just going to straighten our lines. By holding alt, we can select an entire line at once and now I'll just press S for scale and then lock it to the X or Y axis and then type zero. We'll just keep doing this until everything's straight and we have a nice rectangle. Doing this will make it a lot easier to texture or paint on our textures. Tip number three, live unwrapping. To live unwrap, all you have to do is press T to open the menu and switch over to options. Now, if you've never seen this menu before, it means you're either too smart and you know all the hotkeys and all the features this menu offers, or you're really stupid. Either way, it's okay, and I still love you. Once here, just click on the live unwrap. Now, every time you make or clear a seam, your object's gonna unwrap for you. Now, live unwrap and I, we have a complicated pass together because you see, if you straighten some of the seams on your own, the next time you mark or clear a seam, it'll ruin everything you work so hard to achieve. And if you're like me and you strive for order and cleanliness, and then live unwrap strolls in there being all barbaric, it doesn't give a shit about you and what you want, it just lives its life on its own rules, and it's gonna ruin everything you work so hard to achieve. There's been times where I've straightened up and cleaned up really messed up UVs, forgot that I had live unwrap on, added an extra cut or removed an extra cut from a different object, and everything got reset. So I prefer not to use it, but it's up to you if you want 
want to take that risk. Tip number four, keep your UVs visible and in sync. Now, if you take this little box right here, you'll always have your UVs visible. And then whenever you or that dirty bastard live unwrap decides to unwrap your object, it'll auto magically display it for you. Keeping this checked will save you about two button presses. Tip number five, auto arrange and auto pack. When unwrapping, you generally want to keep everything sized pretty equally. If you have one of the grid textures up, you can look at them to determine if everything's proportional based on the size of the image. Now, if something's a little funky, you can just select everything in UV image editor, press control A to auto average the islands, and then control P to auto pack everything. Now, you don't want to auto pack if you've already stacked some of your UVs, because much like the jerk live unwrap, this will split apart your stacks. So what are stacks? Well, that leads us up to tip number six. You can stack similar UVs. If you have two objects that are exact same and they're gonna have the exact same texture, you can just stack them. If you want everything to be perfect, you can click this little tool right here to enable vertex snap and then just move everything into position. And then we have tip number seven, our final tip, and that's stitching. So let's go back to our complex object example and you might look at it and think, yeah, this is fine, but I really wanted a seamless texture here. Well, all you have to do is grab this edge and then stitch them together by pressing V. Now you might be saying, hold on just one gosh darn minute. If I was going to do this and then stitch it together anyways, why the heck would I create that seam in the first place? And to that I'd say, because you want the straight lines. If we were to unwrap this sand seams, you'll notice that the lines aren't completely straight, and that's no bueno. Well, that's about all I had planned to say. If you want to stick around, I'm just going to talk about hiding seams and merging your textures together and some things that I've recently learned while unwrapping. Part 3 is unscripted and performed live, meaning that it won't be quick, it won't be entertaining, and you probably won't like it at all. You've been warned. Alright, so for our first example, I'm going to be looking at this cauldron that I made. So basically what I want to talk about is a little bit about how to hide your seams and trying to figure out where the best place to place the seams are. So... This is a pretty good example of how I hid my seams. So if you look right here for the ring, oh, let me just change this. View limit 0 0.001, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, I hid the seam right here. And that's because when I unwrapped it, I knew I probably wasn't gonna get a perfect texture when I'm trying to add the highlights and shadows. And so instead of trying to figure out how I can make them all line up, really easily, I decided that if I just hide the seam in a spot where almost really no one's going to ever see it or notice it, except for maybe the person that's like specifically looking for the seams, um, it would be a little bit easier to hide it there. So this is the part, this ring right here, this is what it looks like. And so instead of trying to figure out where to add the highlights and the shadows and stuff and trying to make sure everything matches up, again, it's not that detailed, but if I was to add some cuts to this, um, like I did for here, adding some of these little details to the handles, it definitely would have been a little bit more work trying to match everything up evenly. So by hiding it there, if you look at it from a player perspective, you're not really, even if they get super close like this, you're not really going to notice it too much because it's, it's pretty well hidden back behind there. For looking for objects within objects, sometimes, I mean, it's not too hard to do. For this ring, I was going to turn it into a cylinder and then um, try to flatten it out. But then I noticed that uh, I had some extra faces inside here that weren't being used. So I just decided to delete those. And then by doing that, we now added some edges to our objects and those, those you know, count as seams. So then I just had to do the one seam along here and it flattened out pretty nicely. That being said, I probably should have straightened it up a little bit to make the UVs easier to edit, but oh well. Some other good choices of hiding seams would be like right here. So if we go up to the top, this is where I textured this rim. And so instead of trying to make each of these faces a different seam, I just unwrapped this and then straightened everything up. And so I hit it down here because this is where this is going to fade to dark. And then right here, it's going to fade from dark to the rest of the, the normal color. So from dark to the normal color, from normal color to dark. So I figured that dark line is a perfect spot to hide a seam. Because as long as it gets to the darkest point by the end of the UV, and this one starts at the darkest point at the top of the UV, you're not going to notice a seam. And that way I can do that. Right here, I can do the strip of the lightest part. And the, the best part about that and keeping this all one is that I was able to just use a, a lighter brush and then just put a single strip across here with this area being the main focus. And then whatever hit the other areas looked a lot more natural 
than trying to paint this section in, which I did. I, I think I did paint it in solid, but then after that, I went over it to get that fade. And if these were all separate, I'd have to try to figure out in different areas of like how to fade it together so it looks nice, so it doesn't hard cut. And then for the inside, um, I don't know. This is just seemed pretty pretty standard to me. Is like okay, this is a different face. It's straight up. Uh, all the normals are pointing straight up compared to like pointing in or anything like that. So we'll just add a ring here. I don't really know how I could have. I, I suppose I could have removed this seam right here and made the entire thing a circle that flattens out. But you, the reason why you don't want to do that is because it's a lot easier, as you can see here, to paint these straight lines. Just do the green and go straight across. Than it is to try to paint in circles. It's like yes, you could grab the brush tool in Photoshop and just click once and then go inside it and like uh, maybe like use the eraser and then erase the inside. So like circular brush, paint here, go down a couple sizes and then just erase the inside with one click, and you would have gotten the same effect. But it's it's a lot easier just to click somewhere, hold shift, click somewhere else, and then it just draws a perfectly straight line. And then when you unwrap it, or I should say when you texture it, it's going to do all the curve and stuff for you. And you don't have to worry about it. Now the other example I wanted to go over has to do a little bit more with trying to make the seamless textures. And that was the rifle that I modeled last week, if you're watching this when it comes out. Otherwise, I have no idea when it was. So there's a few seams that I hit here, and there's a few things that I got stuck on, and they're the reason why I spent nine hours and one day trying to figure out how to unwrap this thing is because I was so focused on trying to create this the main chamber and body part and this handle or the 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 grip right here trying to turn this all into one seamless texture instead i eventually made it two but it took me a long time to figure out that these should be separate parts and i have no idea why i think originally what i wanted is i wanted this handle to be part of this texture i wanted to have the same camo effect you know if we look at it it's not it's black um, and after looking at a lot of my reference images I realized that oh these these handling and even like the actual gun and handling it I realized that this hand this grip part is actually a another like separate physical object there's a seam here and everything not only like a, a seam for the texture but also a physical seam where the two objects come together and so after I did that I was able to unwrap this body making my seam right here and I was able to unwrap it easily. Now, why did I choose a seam here? Well, because you would want the player to see as few seams as possible. And you want to try to hide them as best you can. So if a player is looking at the gun, it's going to be from something like this perspective. So you want this to be textured as seamlessly as possible. And then if the seam's not the greatest and your patch job's not the greatest, which if you look at mine, it's not. There's a, there's a few spots that you can see, at least I can see, where it does match up. It's like right here is a perfect example. My seam's not perfect, but that's okay because even from like a farther distance, if you're inspecting a gun, you're not going to notice it. Again, this could have been patched up a little bit better for this curve, but you're not going to notice it too much compared to like something like this, or I didn't bother to patch it up at all. I need to go back and I need to fix up this seam right. I spent probably about an hour and a half trying to figure out how I can make this one um, one whole like texture and it just wasn't possible sadly so I had to split up into two parts and now because of that I'm gonna have to go back through and merge these blobs together and figure out something that I can do so it's not always possible, and that's something that I had to learn, is that it's, it's just not always possible to make something seamless. Sometimes you're going to have to create the seams, and you're going to have to go in and edit the textures. 
Now something I haven't experimented with to do is, is I don't know what the adding sharps do. Uh, it's quite possible that when you unwrap stuff, maybe if you add sharps, you can force it to stay as a sharp edge. And then when you unwrap it, it doesn't um, curve it as much or something like that. But again, that's just what I'm assuming it does. I have no idea. And that's something I can always look into and figure out. Or if someone, one of you guys knows, you could uh, let me know. It'd be pretty great. Another thing that threw me for a loop for a while was the magazine. I didn't know exactly what to do for it. Uh, the seam right here was pretty harsh. And so I was trying to figure out how I could make it seamless and it wasn't looking that great. And then I realized that I could just make it black and it would go with the aesthetics of the gun. Keeping just the main body, the little custom plating up front, and the butt of the rifle. Keeping that all textured and making everything else black actually worked pretty well with the color scheme. So that kind of saved my ass a little bit. A um, few more noticeable seams would probably be right here. Yeah, there's a pretty hard seam right here. And, you know, I, I tried a lot of times of removing this and changing up how this looked. And at the end of the day, um, having it the way that I did, making a separate object, was the only way that I could actually get it to work. So you're not always going to be able to make something seamless. And that's both in Blender and in, in real life as well. What made me realize this is I was looking at um, a BB gun that I have next to my door, and I like to shoot birds when they try to shit on my car, and I realized that on the stock, it was a, like, woodland, like, um, leave-type camo, like a typical, like, hunter camo, and I was like, okay, where did they hide the seam on this? And I flipped it over to see the, the bottom of the stock, and I saw that there was a super hard seam where the texture clearly ends and begins. Uh, like super bad, like uh, the, uh, one of the leaves was cut in half. And, and it's like, okay, so this is where the seam is. Like they didn't even try to hide it. So sometimes you can't always make the texture seamless. In my case, it's not the hardest thing because I made this texture. But um, if you can't, then sometimes it's just best to hide it wherever you think they won't see it as much. And you just have to live with that. Because that's that's both true for your model and for real life objects, and I mean, some could argue that it even adds a little bit more realism if there's some type of seam. Um, as for this magazine, after inspecting an actual one, I realized that there is like a seam because this isn't a solid piece of metal. There is an actual physical seam here where the metal clamps together. Now, if I would have modeled that, that would have been a perfect spot to hide the seam. Which comes to my next spot is like hiding seams with seams. I was looking at um, I was looking at some clothing and I was like, how do they hide the seams on this clothing? And then I realized for the sleeves, it's literally this the seam of the sleeves where they sewed it together is where the texture uh, it meets up and actually gets off by a little bit. Half the um, the stripes and the the striped shirt are off by like half the stripes width by the time it hits the seam, and you can just have it reset every time because that's what the seam's for. So sometimes it makes it, it, it does help if you look at the physical object that you're trying to recreate and look for those seams and see if you want to texture stuff and try to make it as seamless as possible. You just have to really look. And at the end of the day, it just takes a lot of time. And you're not going to make it perfect. You can go back and you can try to fix up as many seams as you can. But, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. All right, that's about all I had to ramble on about. Hope you learned something. 